Hello, and in today's STM32 programming, we are going to be covering the USB interface as a virtual COM port. Now for the USB, I've created two files, which is the USB CDC and CDC.h. I've included the circular buffer that we've done for the previous videos relating to the UART and included the particular chips header file and the GPIO file. So for the USB device, we need to go to our our lock file okay now here's the base lock file that i'm using i'm just have the gpio on the leds now to configure it first we need to go to connectivity and then we need to go to the usb section and we say device fs now we need to further configure anything here and we need to go to the middleware as well and usb device and for our class of fs ip the type of usb device that we are going to create you can see we have multiple different usb devices here stm has really made this easy for us we select our communication device as a virtual com port now there's not much to change in these settings the CDC RX buffer sizes that we can adjust according. I'm going to leave them at a thousand. Debug level, no debug messages. We shouldn't have an issue with this. Descriptor size, just leave it as default. And then we can see the device descriptor. So this is your vendor ID. In our case, we're going to leave everything as default. On Windows 10 and 11, the driver will automatically download to your PC. So your vendor ID will most likely get from your company company or you will buy one you can fill that in here the language the manufacturer string will likely be your company it doesn't matter if it's your own personal use what you call this so the type of product that it is can't remember exactly what this is this is a string code the name of the device that will actually show in say your windows device manager or as your tty device configuration string and the type of interface that you're running no user constants and if you go back to the usb and connectivity you'll see it enabled the usb low priority interrupts over here automatically for you next thing is your clock configuration well you can run the solver for it and we can see if we run it you have to sometimes click the resolve clock issue to automatically pull down the pll and we want to do this back to 72 megahertz and then you see it changed the prescaler to 1.5 so we have the full clock speed to our peripherals and it changed the usb peripheral to 48 megahertz which is standard for usb 2.0 then we first generate our code now while it's generating you can watch it here on the side you can see it generated two folders for us the usb device app and a middleware folder this is all sorts of nice things we are mainly going to be working in the usb app folder over here mainly in these two files so the usb d cdc if i assume if is interface and the dot h file now in our source we can go have a look at our c main that it generated it will be a hole initialized now let's just compare it to our current c main which is also a hole in it a system clock config same as ours gpio in it and then we have an mx usb device in it which will initialize the usb device for us now we are going to take this function get over to our c++ file and then we have a look at what's included here which is usb device dot h we can add that to our usb cpc dot h and we are going to include this file as well the usb cdc if now something to note depending on which pin you are pulling up or down for your usb device to enumerate you are going to have one of the gpio pins pull the can't remember which one it is this other d minus or d plus line high and low just to notify your usb host that there is a device attached now in my case i'm using gpio 12 i believe which is on port a so to pull that line low or high you need to have your whole rcc gpio whichever port you got and it's clock enabled otherwise you won't be able to drive the pin high or low so let's get to the coding so for our .h file we create a constructor and our constructor will take in no parameters we say if our usb cdc buffer is not equal to null then we allocate a new one it equals new circular buffer type uint8 and we are going to initialize it with 124 bytes as the buffer size 
and that's it for our constructor and now for our destructor we are going to delete the buffer and we say if not equal to null we delete the buffer and we say cdc buffer is equivalent to null okay just add back our destructor to the header file now the next thing we need to do is we need to do an init function this is going to be a void we just say init and it's also going to take in void parameters and that's going to be init okay now first thing we want to do is we want to create a GPIO initialization structure. So this is create the GPIO. I can use the GPIO from the Blink, but I don't feel it's necessary. This is a very simple procedure. And we do a whole write to the 12th GPIO pin to clear the, the GPIO pin. So that it's low when we initialize it as a pin. And we create our initialization structure. So we say pin 12 is in push-pull mode. The GPIO is no pull up. And we have a low frequency pin. And we do a GPIO hole in it. So now we take the structure and initialize it on port A. We insert a delay. So the pin has gone low now because we wrote the register of pin 12 to be low as the initial value. And then we deinitialize the GPIO. So it's free that we can use it somewhere else. This will release the assertion of the pin on the USB line. So this delay ensures it's low for at least 100 milliseconds so that your USB host can realize there is a slave device or peripheral device whatever floats your boat on your language use so now your host device is aware that there's a usb device so the next function that we call is this usb mx device in it so that will initialize our usb device and in an hour.h file we're going to create a callback which is also going to be static void and we're going to say this is the receive callback and that's to take in a uint8 of pointer buff and a uint32 of type pointer len so this is the length so this is a precursor for us to create a callback so we need to set the call here for our initialization function now we are going to go to our usb devices our app and our usb cdc interface now you can see here here is our buffer sizes here is our handle and there is only a single function generated here that is publicly accessible and this is the cdc transmit fs so there is no receive function available in the default SDK. It might have changed on a newer version, but currently it does not generate a receive function as it is likely sitting in an interrupt. First, we go to a section that says user code begin export variables. Anything with user code begin and end in between, this is where you want to put your code. Otherwise, if you rerun the generator, it will delete your code. Sometimes it deletes your code anyways, and then you cry. But anyways, then here we start by defining callback. So we say type def, and we say this is a void function. And to keep it consistent with the naming scheme, we copy C CDC and then it's going to be receive and callback and that should be a pointer and now we match the input parameters to our receive callback and then we define a user function so you can see here user code begin exported functions this will be void and we are going to call this CDC set receive callback then we take our receive callback and we just give it an input parameter of type cdc receive callback which is the one we defined here and we just say call back so this will create our receive callback now we move this across now we go to our .c file and then we can scroll down here here you can see there are a few functions which is cdc init this is handled by this mx usb device init there is somewhere a dnet function in here as well cdc control 
FS and then we have the CDC receive FS. So this is the function we are interested in. So we control F this and then we can see here is our receive function. We can have a look at the documentation as well, which is data receive over USB out endpoint are set over a CDC interface through this function. This function will issue a NAC packet on a out packet received from the USB endpoint. I'm not going to go into depth about how USB works. It's honestly for a COM port, it's not that necessary. It becomes more necessary if you put multiple endpoints, but I digress. All right. I forgot something. Let's go see private defines, macros, private variables. Okay. So in private variables, we define, just find our definition of our callback. We create a receive callback and we just call this CB. And that is going to be equals to null. We go back to our receive function. And we say if null not equals callback, then we can call the callback and we pass in the buffer and the len pointer okay now we need a method to set this callback function so this is this receive callback so we go to this user code private function implementations we say db callback is equals to the callback so let's just check if that compiles okay great compiles and we go back to our usb cdc.cpp so here where i said we have to set the callback we go receive callback so the set function here and we are going to set it to our static function that we declared over here which is the receive callback. And that's it for the initialization. Now we need to set up the receive callback function. We go to the top. We just declare it over here. Okay. okay. Then we do another check. If the buffer is null, don't do anything with the buffer. We take our buffer, we point it to the put function and simply we put the buffer and the value of the len into the buffer. Let's build and check this. No warnings, great stuff. So the next function we're going to create is a, a send function. You just call this send. You can call it write also if you wish, but I prefer send for USB. And we just copy our buffer variable and our len variable. And I'm going to make this a UN16 because why not? And it's not going to be a pointer. So let's create the skeleton for this or the stub function, whatever floats your boat again. Now, this is also very simple. We go back to the CDC IF.h. Now we have a CDC transmit FS. So this USB CDC transport FS, this is how you transmit over your USB COM port. So that's the function. It returns a UN8. So by an education guess I'm going to guess this is the number of bytes that have been written to the com port and that takes in the buffer and that will take in the len so here's where the UN16 actually comes from it's because this function takes in the UN16 now our next function is going to be read which is going to be a UN16 as its return and then the read will take in a UN8 buffer and that will also be a UN16 of len. And this is one of the more simpler ones. This is a one liner return our. Let's see. Copy this one. And that is going to be pull. And it's going to take in the buffer. And that is also going to take in the len. And if you want to be pedantic, you say if null not equals buffer. We should do this. Actually, we say equivalent to buffer and we return zero because it returns an unsigned value. So we can't return a negative. And we say the next function, we're going to say again a UN16 and we're going to call that count. And that is just going to return the number of elements in the circular buffer. Again, we create the stub for count and we say if the buffer is null, just return zero. And we say, and we take this return value count. And that will return the count for us. So in our main.cpp, we take our USB CDC class device after all our initialization, create 
a variable for it and we say usb underscore cdc okay then we do a hold delay of one second this is a cut method of doing it but it works usually you would be waiting for an event before doing any of the rest of the things but whatever demonstration purposes and then in our while well, one loop so our infinite loop we're gonna say if this is not equals to zero so the number of items then we say a UN16 len is equals to our USB CDC dot read and we need to create a buffer which is going to be a UN8 and we're going to say data and I say that is 64 bytes and we're going to set it to the entire rate to zero b zero data comma size of data then we do a read over here so we are reading in what we are getting we're putting that into our data and we say size of data and then the very next thing we do is we send that data straight back to the terminal program and then we say send and we say this and instead of the size of the data we now tell it we want to send the len of the data uh, let's build and see if it's happy yes it seems to be happy i'm going to put one breakpoint over here and we're just going to move everything over okay then we can start debugging now we're at the hole in it okay now here on the side you can see my com ports there is no stm com port available here now when i run the code it'll bring up a virtual com port and you know what i'm a genius i never initialized the com port okay so before the delay we just have to call in that let's debug again and then as soon as i resume it should initialize a usb device it did do something didn't initialize the com port though rerun that without the, the breakpoint i do hear it uh, let me unplug and replug the usb cable so the usb cable is unplugged currently plugged back in is it bloody com device 8 give me two seconds so I'm bloody blind as a bat. It's this COM port. If we check the properties, details. Apparently it's the Microsoft driver. We just switch the session here of PuTTY. COM8. Okay, so just for anyone wondering, this is my PuTTY config. The speed does not matter with a USB COM port. You can put in whatever you like there. Apparently I hit the key I shouldn't have. But anyways, now I've attached COM8. Okay, now if I... Why is it on COM4? It looks like a Congo one video without creating a bug. So we go in our USB CDC device. You can see I changed this to be equivalent to null. So if this buffer is not allocated, create a new buffer. This used to be not equals. Now let's try this demo again. Okay. So as you can see, currently my desktop thinks it's still attached to the USB device. So if I allow this to play you can see it disconnected you can see party gave a fatal error but we do a reset computer still thinks it's attached if i play here you'll hear the desktop sound you can see there is the com port i restart again and i allow it to resume okay now for party we just say restart session and then as i type you can see it just going all the way so that's an introduction to using a usb virtual com port a like share comment and subscribe is always appreciated thank you have a nice day have a nice